All right, we are um, going to do 4.3, modeling arithmetic sequences. Just remember, arithmetic sequence always has a start and then an add rule. And that's what we're dealing with at this point in time. Um, so here's a real life situation. <clears throat> you can model real world problems or real world situations and solve problems using models of arithmetic sequences. For example, suppose watermelons cost $6.50 each, right? The total cost of n watermelons could be found using this. Look, the cost in relation to the number of watermelons is equal to $6.50 per watermelon. So, one would be $6.50. Two would be twice $6.50 or $13. Three would be three times six dollars and fifty cents or nineteen dollars and fifty cents and four would be twenty six dollars so common difference we already know right I could say thirteen minus six fifty but we already know it's six fifty because they told us how much each so this would be plus six fifty all the way down right plus six fifty and I can do this last one right plus six fifty for a common difference of positive six dollars and fifty cents. Alright. What does n represent? Well, n in this case represents the number of watermelons. Either sold or bought. I think since it's costing, we're probably doing the buying, right? Watermelons purchased. What are the dependent and independent variables? Okay. Independent. In this case, um, is the number of watermelons purchased. All right. And the dependent is total cost. All right, watermelons affect total cost, not the other way around. Find C of seven. So what we do is we say C, we're just plugging it in. This is a explicit, so we just plug right in. 6.5 times seven. I'm gonna come over here and, and do it. Got a little calculator, so I'm gonna go 6.5 times seven and C of 7 is equal to, looks like $45.50, $45.50, I'll put a little dollar sign, and that is the cost of 7 watermelons. Not too bad. Um, domain, what domain makes sense? Well, in this situation, I don't know. Let's see. Well, it's definitely the number is um, greater than or equal to zero, right? Uh, we'll just say greater than. No, I guess you could buy zero watermelons. And if you wanted to put an upper end on it, you could, right? You could say, hey, you know what? How, how many families are going to buy seven watermelons? And you could probably say less than seven. Or if you're a store, you know, I'm not going to buy more than 100 watermelons. So but for right now, we'll just leave it with a low end. We cannot go into the negative watermelons. And I would say four integers, right? I would say four integers, because we're not going to buy half a watermelon. And um, that's it. I'm going to look at this next page, see if we get there today. We, we've got, um, well, obviously we're going to get there, but see if we get there on this video. Yeah, let's do another one. Maybe we can do this whole page. Oh. All right. So there is an example up here for you to read. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do this example. All right. The table shows the cumulative total interest paid in dollars on a loan after each month. All right. Um, determine the value. Well, let's make sure it's the same. So if I go this way, 230 minus 160 is 70. 370. 370. It is. We have a common difference. They're growing by the same. So we know, in fact, it is arithmetic. Um, I'll do that 230 right here. Minus 160 is $70. Common difference is $70. And um, 
So my F1 is going to be 160, right? And my difference is going to be 70. Let's plug it into the formula we've been using, right? <coughs> so F of N is 70. And plus, oh, I'm sorry. I did that right, wrong. F of 1 is 160 plus 70, however many times we keep the loan, right? So if we find F of 20, here we go. F of 20, that's our number we're plugging in right there. That's our substitute. Equals, well, 160 is our start. Plus, well, our we've got our difference, which is going to be right here, which is 70 times, um, in this case, 20 minus 1. And I'm just going to put that in over here. So I'm going to say, hey, you know what? Let's do the 70 times 19 first. So 70, oh, it's not on. 70 times 19 is that. That's what this is. 70 times 19. We've got to add that 160. So I'm going to go plus 160. And it looks like we get 1,490. 1,490. We'll put dollars on there. So the cumulative total interest, all right, interest paid after how many months? 20 months is 1,490. There it is. Let's do one more. All right. Table shows the distance in miles after Mila has traveled for n hours. So it looks like, let's get our difference. Our difference is going to be any number subtracted. So 32 minus 20 equals 12. And just a quick rundown, that looks like 12, and so does that. So they're all 12. And our f of 1 is our starting of 20. So let's write it. We're going to write in explicit, right? especially because they want us to get 10, and we don't want to go 1 through 10. We sort of just plug in 10. So our formula is f of n, a function of number of miles, equals my start of 20 plus my rule of 12 to the n minus 1, right? We don't want to count it the first time, just after that. And then we plug in 10. So f of 10 equals 20 plus 12 times 10 minus 1, which is 20, plus 12 times 9, which is 20 plus 108, which is f of 10, equals 128. We'll write it here, miles driven after, what we got, 10? 10, 10 hours? 10 hours. And that'll be the first page. Um, talk to you guys soon. Oh, it's still going to be the first page. I'll hit the next one very soon, and um, then we'll keep going.